In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to bypass an actual AJAX call and use knock library to intercept it. Consider this case that we want to unit test this function which is actually making an XHR call as well. And this XHR call is actually loading tons of data. Do we really need to actually hit this API and load a huge amount of data to unit test our code? No, we don't. So in that case, what we should do is that we should intercept such calls and should replace it with a dummy call and we should get the sample data which should be sufficient for us to test our code. And to do that, we will use a very good node package which is called knock. So let's install it. npm i hyphen hyphen save dev knock. Now that it is installed, what we need to do, we have to use it into our spec file as well. So let's write const knock is equal to require knock. Now before using knock in the unit test cases, first of all, we need to understand that uh, XHRFN is actually returning a promise. So I hope you remember how we handle promises in the unit testing. So what we will do is let's copy paste this code over here and uh, let's uncomment it. I'm not going to use chai as promised in this case just to explain it. So instead of test promise, we have to call XHRFN. So let's call it then function result. And uh, what we do is let's only print what is the result. Okay. So this is a standard XHR function where we are calling this API as a post call. And when the XHR call is successful, then we are resolving and returning the response text in the form of JSON. And this is the success call and this is for failure. So whatever we are going to return will be received here and then will be printed. Okay, there's one more thing that we should pass done callback function over here. We save it and there's one more thing we need to require this module as well in this file. So let's do that. Let's try to run this test case now. Okay, there is some issue and what's the issue? Oops, we have not installed XML HTTP request. So let's do that npm i s let's run the test case now it's taking some time because it's waiting for my xhr call to be complete now it's completed and what are we getting so this is the response that we received payload, Google, something, something, fulfillment text, speech, display text, and something. But it took approximately nine seconds to complete this API call. Now let's try to mock it using knock. So this is how we will use it. Const scope is equal to knock. And within this, we need to give the URL, the domain name, first of all, and this is my domain name. And then we need to tell that this is my post API, which is slash echo. I'm not sending anything for the timing. Only thing that I am expecting is a reply from this API and it should return me a status 200 and then let's say that we are expecting an ID one, two, three, any dummy JSON. I'm just writing that this is the output that I want whenever I'm going to hit this API in my unit test. So let's save it and let's test it now. Okay. One passing and it is giving me this output ID one, two, three. I have not changed my unit test. It is exactly the same. Only thing that I have done is that I have added an interceptor 
to avoid the actual API call. We would not need this as well. So we can get rid of this and we can test it once again. And it should work, right? And how much time it took? Only 14 milliseconds. Earlier it was actually hitting the actual API call, but now it is bypassing it. And we can mention what output do we expect from this API call. So on the basis of your data contract, on the basis of the structure of the response that you are expecting from this API call, you can simply mock it over here. You can stub the response and then you can test your code. You can also test for the failure of the code as well. For example, if uh, I want to do say expect result to be equal and what do I expect? I am expecting this. And if this is not right, then what I can do is I can write a catch statement here as well. Catch error. Done. New error. Test case failed. Let's save it and let's try to run it now. So we know that we are expecting that ID one, two, three should be the response, but here we want to fail the test case and then we would try to catch it in this section, catch the error in this section and then the test case should fail. Let's do that. Let's see if this works or not. Okay, the test case is failing and it is landing into the error mode that test case failed. This is the message that we wrote over here. Now there are many different options available so you can visit this link and you can find out the options that you want to implement in your test case so that's it from this video in the next video we will learn how to export the reports of unit test cases